All right, guys, here we go. Let's do it up for today. Thank you all for joining me this February 11th, 2018. Two weeks away from season eight of Fear the Walking or Fear Walking Dead, Walking Dead. and then uh, just some good stuff coming this live stream. So post your comments in the live chat or in your comments below. I'll read them and answer them. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of big things going on for the channel. Just trying to get stuff situated. Got the uh, marathon on over there. Season four is where they're at marathon today. Let's wait for everybody to come in. So what's going on? If you got any things to talk about or anything you want to point out there, some super chats are always welcome. I will focus on that for it too. So I am uh, excited for The Walking Dead. A lot of big news has come out since my last live stream last week. So it's pretty crazy of how many teasers and trailers have come out because I think they're trying to recover the whole thing with Carl and people's opinion of the Walking Dead season eight, the second half, people are worried about the ratings and everything. So they're posting teaser trailers, you know, listen to the cast and the producers of what's there for the second half of season eight. And so they're trying to build a case to say, hey, don't give up on the show. A lot of good stuff is coming. And I think a lot of good stuff is coming as well. I'm excited for it. I've said it countless times that I'm excited and I'm excited for the fear of the Walking Dead connection for it. So if you guys are watching, hopefully you're watching the marathon along with me. I got to do some stuff today, so I'll have the marathon going on as well. But I'm excited for The Walking Dead Season 8 to return in two weeks, guys. In two weeks, we're going to have The Walking Dead coming back. It'll probably be a marathon. Hopefully is leading right into the second half of Season 8, Episode 809. And then I'm actually doing a interview next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Facebook with another Facebook group that I'm excited for because it's just a good way to connect with other fans. And I'm one of those people that like to talk about The Walking Dead to really anybody who wants to talk about it. That's hence the community feel. And hopefully you'll join us on that for me on Facebook. So I posted it in the uh, Walking Dead community. I'm just trying to bring it up right here on my phone as I'm talking, but it's pretty cool. So it'll be here. It's the uh, Negan Saviors Walking Dead True Fams event. It's going to be uh, next Sunday, February 18th at 7 o'clock p.m. I'm excited for it. The host is Jim Seacrest, Seacrest, like like Ryan Seacrest, no, Seacrest, I'm going to talk to him about whatever topics he wants to talk about and ask me some questions, so uh, hopefully you'll check that out, I will ha I'll still do my live stream at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then I will do the uh, interview there, so I have it in my Walking Dead community page on Facebook, but if you're on Facebook and you're doing something there at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., Check it out. Probably go for about an hour, I would assume, but there's a lot of good stuff going uh, for the interview. I want to talk about the books, The Walking Dead, probably talk about the cruise, and I don't know if there's going to be other people to ask questions or what, but it's just my first really interview through Facebook, so I haven't really done one through that, but on here I have. So like you said, guys, do some live chat questions on here. Thank you all for joining me. Everybody is awesome for joining me this Sunday, February 11th. Two weeks, guys, we can do it, we can make it, but um, I'm excited for that. I can't say it enough, but I am there. So Pizza Boy Glenn, great name. What do you think happened to Nick in Fear? I would assume he's alive. Nick is a big character on Fear the Walking Dead. He's one of my favorite characters of that show. I would assume that he sticks around. I don't know if anybody actually died in the way of, I don't want to give too much away, but the end of season three, Possibility of some deaths, but from the pictures and some spoilers that are going around, I would assume Nick's alive, Alicia's alive, Strand, Madison we know, and some new characters are coming into the fold. And it's funny, Pizza Boy Glenn, great name, is that Robert Kirkman was a pizza boy, not a pizza boy, but a pizza delivery guy at some point in his life. So that's why he came up with the profession for Glenn, I'm assuming in there too. So Paul Eagle 1000, is Lauren Cohan safe? 
as of season eight, yes, because she's renegotiating for season nine. So she would make it through through season nine. So she would make it through all of season eight, obviously, because she wants to have a better contract for season nine, 10, however long the contract would be, if it's three years or however. I'm sure they have a plan for where they want to be and renegotiate, but the Walking Dead cast for a while there wasn't making much money. Then there's been some reports that they came out and they renegotiated. So it all comes down for money, you know, salary per episode, wages, money coming in for the actors and then budget and, you know, where they're going to film and that. There's only so much money that they want to have for a budget, even if it's, say, you know, $100 million or whatever. Part of that budget is going to be per episode of what it could be. So it's definitely something that I don't know what's going to happen with it, but I heard that she's trying to renegotiate. She's coming back to the table for renegotiations, Lauren Cohan. So I like the idea of Maggie sticking around and Lauren Cohan playing Maggie. How about you guys? So Tudor, do you think Dwight will tell Eugene about Carl? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I wonder, I'm interested to know how Negan finds out or Eugene or what how they find out. You know, obviously the Hilltop connection where everyone goes to the Hilltop, you'll see Carol will find out. But Eugene, I don't know if Eugene will find out the whole thing with Carl, if Eugene kind of cares. I mean, he's kind of out to save himself and he's all about himself. So I don't know if that will come around for Eugene and if, you know, Dwight actually goes back to the Saviors or what point that actually happens, if it does or not. So we'll see. Why do you think Tara is pointing a gun at Dwight in the teasers? I don't think Tara trusts Dwight. I don't think she ever will based on her killing uh, Denise. That's not really going to sit well with Tara. I mean, if someone killed your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your wife, your husband, your loved one, whatever it would be, how are you going to trust that person going forward? I don't know if you can, and I would understand if somebody didn't. So I think it's just Tara is still pissed at the sight of Dwight because any interaction that they've had, it's been like when Daryl had the knife at Dwight and Tara was like, do it, do it. Tara's the type of character that tells other people to do things and she doesn't really do too much herself. Maybe that goes away in season eight, but I don't know what exactly is happening in that, but maybe Dwight does something kind of questionable and Tara is just looking for any reason to get rid of him, which I thought it would be pretty interesting. So um, we'll see that. I don't mind Tara. I don't know what her storyline is going to be. I like the idea of her having another storyline, maybe with Oceanside again. But we know that Aaron and Enid are connected with Oceanside, if you saw the trailers and the breakdowns. So I thought it was pretty interesting um, what's going to happen with them. So Mr. TSM, what do you think about Carl? Is he going to die or does he still stand a chance? So I hate that I have to keep answering that. Nothing against the question. But it's just like he got bit and we're still questioning if he's going to live. No other time has that ever come up in The Walking Dead. Jim got bit, Tyrese got bit, they they chopped his arm off, he had the best chance to survive, but he still died, and Carl got bit on the side. So obviously, they're pointing it in a spot that he cannot make it, and it's a shame, but the whole thing with the future of Carl and that and contracts and Whatever you want to believe and whatever you want to hear, Carl's not going to make it. His last episode will be episode 809, maybe flashback form or whatever, but Carl is not going to make it past episode 809, and it's rumored to be within the 20, 30 minute mark of the extended episode. So the first part will be the Carl situation, and they they go off. So when I get more specific spoilers about it, we'll talk about the whole Carl situation, how it happens, but is Rick going to put him down? Is Carl going to put himself down? Michonne, it had to be, I would think it'd be one of those three because they go into the church, Rick, Michonne, and Carl together. So I would assume that they do it, that maybe they do it there or not, or how, why they bury him or what happens. So it's going to be a sad episode, sad part to it for sure. So I would have liked to have Carl survive. I don't think this is a good way of having him go out anyway because he's been through so much. He's been through so much that's crap for him to go out the way it is is one thing that's pretty annoying for it. So let's see. What do you think? Do you think the Gabriel had a wound and got Walker blood in it? That's what gives Negan the idea of the weapons. I don't know. Maybe getting sick. Maybe just the idea of Gabriel getting sick is where Negan got the idea from that we could just scratch and do that. I hope it comes around where it makes sense, but that's what's on the bloody bat 
for in the, in the video of the uh, trailer breakdown, the latest teaser trailer, which is crazy. Like I said before, there's all these teaser trailers, which is great. I mean, I love it. I want to see it. I put it on together and I can make sense of it. And I have the synopsis for the uh, second half of season eight. A lot of them that make sense. A lot of them give good information for it. So, um, yeah, Dan, no problem. You're welcome guys for asking questions. I, I'm just glad you are, uh, having a good time with the live chat. So do you think, let's see where we at there. If Nick's GF from Fear the Walking Dead is actually the word, world's first zombie, so could the virus have started from drugs? Just a thought. Great question. Living Corp says that's what people are kind of thinking and what kind of bo builds the case for the blue meth breaking bad outbreak start, which people are like, it doesn't make sense and Robert Kirkman does nothing to do with that. Well, AMC has a connection of both shows. So if AMC wants to say this is how they started it, they're trying to convince people that the blue meth drugs or some sort of it started the virus it could but not everyone does drugs recreational drugs whatever they might take prescription drugs but ultimately not everyone's going to do any of that sort of substance so how could it start if we're all infected it's one of those things that'll never be explained to robert kirkman because he doesn't know probably a specific answer and once people have an answer they're gonna be like well that doesn't make sense well if that is infected, how are babies infected how has this happened how has this happened it's just you're gonna leave it vague for sake of not having to defend it is what what is going to happen for that so if you read my books i'm going to eventually talk about why i think a zombie apocalypse would be able to start and a hypothesis i will answer things for that throughout the book series it doesn't start at the very beginning or what but it does talk about those and what makes sense and what would happen and what could possibly cause it and what that so in my book series i would have to have answers to what i think would be a good cause of it in my world of a zombie apocalypse in the fight for us book series so is aaron a goner i always liked him as in, i don't know zach that's a good question i don't think so i could see aaron living on for many more seasons of it because he does bring a lot to the table he's one of the stronger alexandrians he might be one of the few alexandrians left that we kind of met he also is connected with rick and the gang and the group also the comic connection with jesus so speaking of the comic stuff 176 came out on wednesday I read it. I thought it was good, but people were like, oh, it was great. It was this. It was that. It was just a good connection that I thought, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's about Michonne and the Michonne connection in the comic and the show and the, and the Michonne Telltale video game. It's all over the place. I mean, on the show, she has one thing. She has this. On the comic, didn't really have this, but then she brought something in from Telltale Games over to that. And it's kind of cool that it's connected, but it's all connecting all over the place. So either way, the Michonne connection, I thought it was nice and sweet there too. We found out about her job. We found out more about the you know Commonwealth. Do you like the female governor? Maybe, maybe not. I like the idea of the soldiers, and then they introduced the Mercer name because next episode will be next month with Mercer probably going to be a bigger part of that but i kind of don't like it's just going to be michonne you know eugene and the small little group the princess with this commonwealth we're not going to see rick and we're not going to see certain things unless they go back with them so i don't know we'll eventually get to that but 76 was a good stepping point it was a good you know further point of the second part of the six part series of the new world order but um, very cool, guys. Very cool, Jerry Lynn. That's very, yeah, whenever you let me know, um, make sure I get it to see it goes through for that, for the donations for that. But book six is going very well. I'm on chapter nine. Uh, we write about 16, 17 chapters per book. And I'm uh, going for the uh, 16, 17 chapters, probably around that. But I'm on chapter uh, nine, started writing that and it's good stuff i'm excited for the story it's going to be the second volume of the series going off in a little different world a little different tangent a little different area so i'm thinking that i'm going to be able to open up book seven for new donations book six is already kind of taken and book five keep people carrying over there for it so if you donated for it i'm definitely putting you in the book and i got a lot of that going forward it's pretty cool stuff where i can plug and play different people and some of you guys right here i get inspiration from that and if you donated through paypal or patreon or however you want to do it it's you're going to be in it and hopefully you're liking the parts for that too started in book five and book six and we'll continue that on down the road for uh, the future of the book series so fight for us amazon.com barnesandnoble.com kindle versions as well 
And um, it's something I'm very proud of and excited for that. Uh, let's see what else we got for questions, guys. Yeah, book. I just like in the part. I love season four, the start of it with the uh, the Walking Dead with that that lady. You're like, man, these zombies are talking. It was a good. I thought it was a good premiere. It's one of the, one of the good premieres of the Walking Dead. So, Daryl, an older version of Lydia. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know if Daryl's ever going to have a love interest kind of there. I don't know if Lydia will actually be a boy. They could switch that. Lydia doesn't have to be, and Lydia could be a boy that connects with Enid now. It could be Enid's connection. So we'll see what they do with the with the whispers of the season nine, I'm guessing, would be the start of the whispers for it. So let's see. Do you think that Fear of the Walking Dead will be turning into either the whispers or the Commonwealth? I don't know about the whole thing because we were just given the Commonwealth. That can't be soon. I don't know because the Commonwealth is in Ohio. That's not Texas, but they could have started there to move it there. I, I just want it to be its own kind of storyline. We don't need to connect the comic with that, but the whispers, it could be a small little appearance of them. But again, that's going to be a time jump of Fear of the Walking Dead now. So it's going to be at the same time of The Walking Dead. So it could be, to me, if anything, it would make sense if it was the whispers going to be there. So, uh, very cool, Jerry. I appreciate the shout out on there for the for the book shout out. I'm, glad, I'm just glad people are enjoying them for uh, for everything. So, hey everyone, bunch bunch of people just joined in. So, um, do you have help with your books? Um, I have Fiber Optic Hell, great name. I um, I come up with the ideas myself. I um, edit them, and then my wife edits them a little bit. Need to improve the editing and uh, certain things to put more time towards that because I, I write the books, I write it down, and then I go through and edit it. The software that I use isn't the best, so I'm relying on that a little bit too much. So I need to do more of the grammar check and the spoiler and the spelling check and stuff like that because I'm excited to write it and then get it out to you guys. So I'm gonna take extra time and edit it and edit it again and then go through it and edit some more before we post it um, available on amazon.com barnesandnoble.com and kindle versions for it so bri will rick find out that daryl and the truck situation i don't know that's a great question i don't know if it matters after rick finds out about carl and the situation there is it going to matter too much he might not even care because of carl's situation because the carl death is going to change rick this is what nicotero said so it's going to be that he wants to kill negan now even more or he wants to kill all the saviors or he wants to do some different approach is what they're saying because he kind of wanted to spare everybody he wanted to save everybody is that going away i want to assume that daryl only has some interaction with him at alexandria in the sewers and then michonne and rick and Carl do their thing while Daryl takes and leads the group to the hilltop. Maybe they clear out a little some of the walkers at Alexandria first before they go, but I don't know how much interaction they're going to have because if Rick just lost Carl, Daryl's not going to be like, I'm sorry for your loss, man. I drove the trash truck into the sanctuary. Don't know sure. I'm not sure how that comes up and I don't really think it would make sense for that. So what do you think of the new character, Sadiq and Dylan? Uh, Sadiq... Yet remains to be seen. Nothing really much from that. But Dylan, I don't know if he's going to be good or bad or flip and turn the table against them because so many people are going to be at the hilltop, including the prisoners of the saviors. So something's going to happen with those prisoners. And we're not sure if Dylan is going to be killed or not, or Jared is going to be taken out. Eventually, we're going to find out about some of those things. But we're not sure what happens with Dylan just yet. So I'm, trying to, I'm interested to see if he's going to be a good guy or a bad guy, if he's going to be the Dante character from the comics. But either way, I think the second half in season eight is going to be good. And hopefully, all you guys are going to be watching. And you're going to continue with the process of The Walking Dead. Because I think it has a lot going for it. The second half hopefully will be better than the first half and setting up season nine. And hopefully the contracts all work out. So then everybody comes back and we get to see the future of the show. But I don't want money and contracts to disrupt the show. I want the writing to be the writing and stuff and go forward. But that's in a perfect situation. That doesn't that doesn't always happen. So yeah, definitely keep your eye on Dylan. He's something you get, you have to watch if he's good or not. So 
Um, I appreciate everybody for joining me. So, Eric, how many books are you going to make? Uh, good question. Don't know. I know how I'm going to end the series. I just don't know. It's kind of, I'm kind of pulling a Kirkman here <laughs> because I know the end of the series. I just don't know when it's going to be. It won't be for many books. Right now I'm on book six. I'm planning on doing five books per volume. So I'll probably have three volumes. So probably around books 15. I probably have like 15 books. I think would be a good thing. And then I'll probably end the series around book 15 or 16. And then depending on how I end it, if eventually I come back to it or I have a different, because I have another book in mind about a different story, a different connection of the zombie apocalypse, maybe being in a different part of the country. And it would be totally away from the main characters of this story. But I just like the idea of a whole separate book that I, that might be a couple books actually. So I have some big stuff in my eyes. So I'm excited for putting it down on paper because to me, I think art, writing, drawing, expression, music, the arts are a good stress relief and a good way to get out. So if you guys like to do something of that, any of that, writing, drawing, producing music, whatever it is, I think you should explore that because it's good stress relief in this stressful world. And me writing about this stuff is very cathartic and it makes me feel like I can express my story to people who want to read it. So it's very um, awesome that you guys like that. So thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for the compliment on the beard. I appreciate it. <laughs> so I'm just growing it out. I'm just, it's uh, getting hot here in Florida. That's why I don't have a, hot, a hat on or anything. It's getting a little too hot in here. So I'm trying to uh, get that. I hate the air conditioning being run and I hate the heat coming on without any of that. So hopefully it's going to cool down a little bit. It's going to be like 80 degrees. So I'm sure people would love that. But if they're all like, it's, it gets kind of warm for it. So uh, will my books be on audiobook at any time? That takes time to do, and I have to look how to do it. But yes, ACC, I'm definitely thinking about doing that. I'm trying to do a comic first, so I'm trying to raise money for that. So if you buy the books, if you donate to the books, the money that I'm making, if you buy Walking Dead Mystery Boxes too, all that stuff is being put back into this channel, the comics, the books, and the mystery boxes. So I, I just keep putting it back into things. I don't like, I'm trying to make the comic happen. I'm trying to make one issue of the comic happen this year because it's a lot. It's cumbersome to do. You got to write a script and you got to have this and you got to have artwork and you got to do that. So I'm trying to do the best I can to raise money for it. So I think comic issue one will be uh, the big thing to do. So I'll probably be writing book six and then I'm going to take a break from the writing and put it into the uh, comic and then come back and write book seven and eight. So I'll probably have book six, seven, and eight out this year, and then one issue of the comic. And I think that would be a very successful year, along with t-shirts. I'm trying to do some hats. I'm trying to do some other things as well, along with go to the conventions. I'll be going to Walker Stalker Nashville in three months. As actually Walker Stalker Nashville. I'll be flying there. And then uh, going to Atlanta in uh, October for Walker Stalker there. So hopefully you guys will be checking out a lot of that good stuff. You're more than welcome to, and I'll always be trying to include you in this and being part of it in videos and there too. And then when I have that, I'll probably be trying to do a web series of it. But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get all this stuff, but it takes time, money, energy, effort to do it. And uh, we're one step by step, but we're getting there. We're getting there for it. So Let's see. Uh, is there any chance Carl gets bit by a whisper? Um, no, John. It, well, there's a chance. I need to say there's, you're telling me there's a chance. But anytime that comes up, I would like to think of it as been possible. But if you look at the pictures, if you look at everything, Carl is just not going to make it. If you look at what Nicotero said about Carl getting bit, it's not like he can survive it. It just doesn't make it just doesn't make sense that he's gonna kind of be there too. So uh, we'll see what you guys got. So what do you have here? Will Oceanside join the war now that their leader is gone? I believe so. I believe Oceanside comes and joins the fight and helps them. They probably come to the aid at the battle at Hilltop because that's where the next big battle is coming at Hilltop. We're gonna see a lot at Hilltop. I would assume starting in episode eight oh nine. 10, 11, you know, we're going to see the scavengers, we'll see the saviors, we'll see, you know, they're going to be different tactics and different principles, 
You know, I'm excited for it, guys. It should be pretty good. It might even be much better than the first half of Season 8, and I thought that was pretty good. So Season 8 hopefully is turning it around for it, and All Out War will be resolved. I know a lot of people are like, hurry up with this damn war already. It's one of those things that is drying out over and over, and it's this and that, and now we got to worry about the Carl death, and this is going to happen, and then you're like, all right, just end this already. Let's move on to bigger and better storyline. Hopefully it doesn't feel that way. I don't think it will, but... The kingdom is going to be kind of tore up. The hilltop is going to be the last stopping ground for Rick's group. And then the savior is going to show up and we'll see the big battle there. Should be pretty awesome for uh, the second half of uh, season eight, guys. So is what if Rick's group was recruited by the savers in season 5B? Um, that would have been pretty interesting. It would be interesting because if you think about it, too, Gimple and Kirkman want you to feel like if, if Negan was the person we felt we saw from the beginning, we were following them, that we were supposed to be mad at Rick. But we haven't, and we didn't. So that's kind of stupid because to me, Rick's group is the one people we're following. That's the home team. That's who we're following. That's our main people. So to make you feel for other people is kind of tough. It's a tough writing and tough situation to do that. And it's kind of alienating some fans. And then you're killing off some people that you kind of love, you know, the original four. And then Morgan's going to be leaving and everything. So it's just crazy to think about it. So I don't know. It's tough for everything for that, guys. So um, great question. What did I think about the Super Bowl? That was last Sunday. That's crazy. It was last Sunday that uh, I did my live stream and then I was excited about the Super Bowl, not excited about either team. I liked the Super Bowl. I liked the commercials. The halftime show to me was much to be desired, even though the selfie kid was pretty funny. But the Super Bowl was back and forth, touchdowns this, the fourth down call and the goal line and you know Nick Foles playing good and it was pretty great. It was a good Super Bowl. I didn't really care who won either way, but I was um, enjoying to watch the game so let's see what else we got here so what's going on with you guys this sunday there's no super bowl hopefully you're going to watch the marathon of the walking dead i got to do some stuff around the house and getting these stuff together and then i'm going to try to write a little bit some more so like i said i'm in chapter nine of so i'm about halfway done and i started writing last friday so it's been you know a good amount of time that i'm putting in to get the uh question the uh content in for book six entitled keeper so i have some teaser stuff online on my facebook and instagram so if you follow me on instagram i'm at the pt channel and on facebook we have a fight for us book page so if you want to follow that i post concept art and ideas and you know concept covers that'll be coming out for it so we'll have a lot of good content for you guys so Bri, will the Kingdomers move to the hilltop or they stay at the kingdom? A lot of them are going to be at the hilltop. If you see the breakdowns that I do, you see Jerry's there. You see a bunch of other hilltop people. Our kingdom people will be there. And we just don't see Ezekiel. But I would assume Morgan and Carol save Ezekiel. And eventually they'll all be there for the big battle at the hilltop. Because the king, maybe Ezekiel stays and tries to rebuild it. But I'm not sure how the supports are and the walls efforts or if it's just blown up pretty good because there's going to be you know another little battle there with morgan carroll and the rest of the saviors well gavin that's the big question what do you think do you think gavin lives dies let me know your response guys what would you want to happen with gavin because i think gavin brings a lot to the table and he's one of those people that you like you're like oh he's not so bad he's actually the one savior that i actually like and then that means I'll probably die, right? That's the way the writing goes on this show. So we'll see what happens. We don't know any definitive stuff yet, but my hunch would be that he dies. So yes, yes, I have a face. Yes, Lauren, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, what do you have here? Do you think Lauren Cohan will stay or leave due to her renewing her contract? And if so, do you think they will give her a good or a bad outing? Well, if she was going to be out, if she was going to be written out, again, they could still have the Maggie character. They could recast it. And it wouldn't be the worst thing ever to recast the character because Maggie does bring a lot to the table with Hilltop going forward. But Lauren Cohan I th hopefully stays. Hopefully they work out the contracts and they give her whatever she wants and maybe they give her you know, a three-year deal or however long the contracts would be and they give her a good amount of thing and they make her happy because you know, if you just pay the right things, 
people will, won't let you down. And hopefully, if I was on a show for if I was on a show from season two to season eight, and I was on a show for six years, I would want an increase in pay. I just know I would, right? Because especially if you see all these people getting money, you see all these contracts and you see all these big things and you see this merchandise and you see this stuff, because there's not really Maggie merchandise. Either way, if, if there was, would Lauren Cohan get a piece of that? Probably not. AMC probably gets all that. So they probably get tons of money from that. But Lauren Cohan, I have to figure, wants more fair market value. And if you've been on a show for six years, they should get a lot of money. So Melissa McBride should get an increase. Andrew Lincoln, Norman Reedus, Chandler Riggs, but maybe they didn't want to do that is what I'm going with that he's off the show. But if she was to get written off, that would be pretty tough to, uh, I don't know how they would do it. I don't think it would make sense. So I'm not sure uh, what they would do for that. Um, great question. What do you think? Who do you think will die in issue 200, Rick or Negan? Uh Great question, Tudor. I don't know which direction they want to do. Would you want to see Negan carry on past Rick? Because Rick had 100 episodes, basically, or 100 episodes, 100 issues, 99 issues before Negan came around. Then you see Negan for, he's not in every issue, and neither is Rick, but you see Negan for 100 issues, and then he dies in issue 200? I would personally like to see Negan die in issue 200 and Rick live on. Because it's the Rick show. It's not Negan. It's not his comic. I mean, that's going to take it down a whole different path. Even though I do like comic Negan better than show Negan. Because you can get away with certain things in the comic. But I would go with Negan. That's my my thoughts. But how about you guys? What would you What would you think? So, um, thank you. The comic is, is something I, I want to do. Um, it would start off at the beginning of the book series. And the book series would be the main uh, source material. But I think... I wouldn't have it exactly. We would have some twists and turns and little different things there too. Like like the show for The Walking Dead and the comic of The Walking Dead are a little different. I would do the same thing for the comic versus the uh, the source material of the books. But you would be able to read a bit of it there too and you could figure out a little bit more. So I'm thinking that I would have a little things. But the comic idea would be more visual and I just don't have the wherewithal to do that. I can type stuff in the thing and put up there, but I just can't draw with the best of them. But I have some some good artists that I'm talking to and draw that. It's just very expensive to have a, I'm trying to have about a 25 page first issue and it would be legitimate 25 pages. There wouldn't be like ads and stuff like that. So it would be comic for that. And then I like the idea of having letter hacks, having something at the end to answer questions or having something added in there. So I would be able to put something in there, something special for you guys. Shout outs to my PT peeps and everybody that's in here too. So um, definitely be on the lookout for that. So I think that would be pretty awesome for you guys to, to all pick up a copy for, you know, four bucks, three ninety nine, or whatever it would be. So um, how much can we trust Dwight? I think a lot. I think Dwight's on Rick's team. I think he's picking Rick's side to do everything there f- to help them take out Negan. I don't think he wants anything for that. So I think we uh, think Dwight will be an awesome character after the war for everybody to trust. And I think he, if they stick to the comic connection, he will be somebody that everyone should be able to trust. I don't see why he wouldn't. And hopefully Sherry comes back around, right? I know I get the Sherry question. I get the Heath question a lot. I just don't have the answers. I wish I did. I wish I knew a definite answer. And I hope that Sherry and Heath comes back. And I hope Heath is mentioned ever. He's not. Um, There was a funny question on the Walker Stalker cruise where this lady asked Tara, why did she treat Heath like a like a stepchild, like what are you doing to Heath, man? You you didn't you never brought his name up again. It was pretty funny, Helena Masterson on the on the cruise for that question. Um, let's see what you got on here. Yeah, you want Negan to die in two hundred? I think. Oh, I, if you want that, like I think Robert Kirkman. Well, why wouldn't it be issue three hundred? You know, for for Rick to uh, to die. Because if you do 100 issues, 200 like that, and then Rick dies in issue 300, you know Kirkman values his comic, and he doesn't want to mess that up by any means. And I would, too. I wouldn't want to miss anything. My baby, my my art, my book series on that, too. I wouldn't want anything to throw it off. But that would be cool if Negan died in issue 200, and then Rick in issue you know 300 would be pretty 
I would be happy with that. Do you think there's any way they totally change the story in the Sabres win battle and we start following them? That would be pretty interesting, John Sullivan, but that would really kill ratings. That would really kill a lot of things too because regardless if you like Negan or the comic or the show or what, Negan has not been good for the show for a lot of people's eyes. One, because he's killed beloved characters and since he's come into the show, it's been a different feel and a different way of it because if you watch season four, if you watch the marathon now, it's got a totally different feel. Rick's group's the only group and the main focus and it's just... One of those things that I think it was just better because we're following one thing. Even when the governor comes back around, it's kind of like, oh, but he was clearly a villain for that. Negan's kind of the one of those, you don't know how it is. So um, have you read Doomsday Kingdom zombie comic from Ronnie Hayes? No, I don't really uh, read other comics besides The Walking Dead and maybe some X-Men stuff. Uh, but that's cool that um, he made that on there too. More power to him. Um, I'm not a hater of other things like that, even though people on other channels and stuff, like I'm sure Ronnie Hayes will do something on his live stream. And then people in here that I know showed, you know, stuff, the, uh, screen captures and, uh, pictures of it that, um, they're like dogging my channel and stuff, but I'm a positive person. So I'm not going to bring that down, but more power to stuff like that. If independent people like myself and other YouTubers can make comics and movies and books and content. That's what it's all about, guys. We're a walking dead community and I'm all about that, even with other YouTubers, even though sometimes I don't agree with some of the videos that they make and what, but it's a free world and we're allowed to do that and uh, keep it positive and keep it moving. That's what I'm all about. So what's my favorite uh, season of The Walking Dead? Season six is um, so many good episodes in that season, except for the season <laughs> six finale cliffhanger was crap but i like season six favorite i like season five and four and three i like a lot of that stuff going there too probably season six and then five and then three and then four and then you know i guess seven and then two and one i don't know how to rank them in there but because it was just a lot like season one is still really good but it was only it was a short episode short and short amount of season but season six is my favorite one how about you guys for it so um let's see what you got here what do you think will J what do you think will jadis do uh jadis i don't know that's a great question because i could see her just sacrificing herself because her people died she was the main reason why they died she kind of picked both sides and then wasn't a good person to be between both sides. So I could see her sacrificing herself. I think that would be the best, the best thing because if she lives, everyone's going to think, is she alpha? Is she this? Is she going to be that? I don't know. Is Rick going to give her mercy? Probably because it's mercy prevails over my wrath. I think Rick gives Negan mercy and Jadis mercy. I think that's what, um, is what going to happen is what, could possibly happen if Jadis doesn't jump into the pit of scavengers and gets devoured by them. I think that eventually, I think that would make the most sense for for that. So Lenny J Lenny said, Lenny James said, Morgan gets messed up. Do you think Henry will die in the battle, causing Morgan to leave the group, or will Rick be sparing Nick and Negan? Uh, great question, Eddie. Um, that's a great question. I don't know why Morgan exactly leaves, but I think it would have something to do with the saviors and Negan. I don't know if he wants to be around Negan and the saviors and the battle and the war and all that, because that'd be pretty crappy if Henry died. I hope Henry, hope Henry doesn't die because they're killing off kids left and right in this series, but um, not sure what exactly happens. I just think Morgan feels that he has to kill everybody there and if he's not there, he doesn't feel like he have to kill anybody more. So I don't, I don't think it's going to be Morgan. I mean, it could be wrong. This is my hypothesis, and the writers are going to do what the writers do. But will Morgan? I think Morgan is clear mode. I think he's going to kill Gavin possibly. He's going to take out Jared. He's going to take out some other people. And he's like, I just can't keep this up. I can't keep killing all these people. So I need to get away from this. And maybe he gets in that helicopter and rides to Texas or he gets a horse and he, he rides and he rides to Texas or he gets a motorcycle or a car or something, but he gets, he gets out of there too. So 
Uh, let's see what you got. Great questions, though, guys. You've gotten some good questions later, too. So I'm going to go for about another 20 minutes, and then uh, i got to do laundry and all this you know, fun stuff around the house. So what do you think Gavin meant by saying the king is the most important one to capture? Um, I don't know. That's a great question. Well, to Gavin it is because Gavin was connected with them and the tiger <laughs> and the kingdom was there was the kingdom was the biggest group. So I think if you take out the kingdom, Rick doesn't have a shot. Rick doesn't have the people, the manpower, the wherewithal without the kingdom's help. So I think it was just a numbers game for how much the kingdom could support Rick and give them because they had weapons, they were training, they were kind of military-esque. And so without them helping Rick, Rick would possibly fall. So um, Deb S, great question. Why would Rick want Jadis now? Looks like her crew was all killed. Rick needed the numbers. Yeah, I don't know. I just think Rick feels bad for Jadis after all that. Rick's going to be like, enough killing, enough of this. But Jadis could, like I said, Jadis could end up eventually take matters into her own hands. But Rick may give her mercy because that's what it's all about with Sadiq. And so that was introduced. So that's going to be a big part of the second half of season eight for that too. So what are the rumors of Maggie's contract, Don? Well, right now, Maggie, does, Ma Maggie, Lauren Cohan, who plays Maggie, does not have a contract. She was given a contract with an extension with a raise. She declined it. She's filming Mile 22 with um, Mark Wahlberg and Ronda Rousey. And she was she's in like Columbia where they're filming. And they're coming back. The latest is that she's coming back to the table for contract negotiations. And remember, it's negotiations. Maybe she's saying like, look, you know, give me an extra 100000 per episode and we'll call it and we'll do be good. Whatever she wants. I don't know. I mean, I don't know the numbers. But either way, I just think she's trying to get the most fair market value that she should. The Walking Dead is a cash cow and everybody wants to feel like they're taken care of. Everybody wants a piece of the pie. And I don't blame her for that. Hopefully, But it, hopefully the contract just makes sense for the budget and for Maggie and for her people and this and for the network as well. But I think no one is above the show. So you can't pay someone too much money, especially when the the parts may not be there. But Maggie does bring a lot to the table in the future of that. But we all know that. We all thought Carl was going to be the future of the show. But he's out. And maybe that contract from Carl... Chandler Riggs can go to Maggie now. So his contract can go to Maggie. So I think Maggie will be okay. I'm uh, excited to see how it actually plays out because I don't want to feel like this show suffers because the uh, show contracts aren't good. So we have to make for that too. So that would be pretty pretty crappy if the show suffered because contract negotiations do that. And I'm not a big fan of that at all so who do i think will put down rick Gr or carl grimes i think it happens off camera i don't think we actually see it um most likely but i think it's michonne i would i would it's either carl rick or michonne i would say it's michonne that's my my best guess for it so um let's see what we got here guys will maggie kill those savers in the hilltop or just some of them i don't know i think i think they get away <laughs> From what I'm seeing, there's a big episode, episode 14, the second half, involves a good part of those saviors. So maybe they let them go. Maybe Jesus lets them out. Something happens. Maybe the saviors come attack and they get out and they eventually get freed because of the saviors come to there, like Simon and them come back and uh, they get them out. They have, where does Gregory go? Does Gregory stay with them or does he try to join the, the Simon side? That'd be pretty pretty funny to see him go over there again but he needs to go like Gregory needs to go big time we know how it happens in the comics so I think that would be a good storyline to happen in season nine what kind of storyline should Jerry what should Jerry get going forward hopefully a good one I love Jerry I think Jerry should be stick around for a while I think that he needs to still have faith in Ezekiel and show that that people can still trust him even though he's not a king and Jerry knows that and it's fine with that but still going forward that he still has allegiance to the kingdom and Ezekiel it would make make good sense or he could dress up in a tiger outfit and have uh, you know Jerry play Shiva so do you think 
the cur- with the crossover Fear the Walking Dead, do you think we will get a possible cameo with Abraham and Eugene before we see Morgan? I would love that. I would love to see that as well, Matthew, but I don't think that happens because of the time jump of The Walking Dead, The Fear of the Walking Dead. So the time sequence doesn't connect that way because Abraham's already gone in this world between the two shows. So it wouldn't make sense for um, it just couldn't happen in, in, in the timeline. So do you think that the scavengers was pointless in the show? Yeah, I think they were dumb. I think it didn't make sense. It's just I like the idea of trash people. And I like that whole connection, but I don't like um, the way they talk and the way it was and, and the way, but just so many things were just done pretty stupid for it. So what do you think Gavin meant? I got that one. I got that one. Sorry, just refreshed on me for the questions. So uh, we got here. Will well, Maggie kill them? Yes, I already answered that. So uh, Carl, I believe Michonne will. Can't stand Sadiq. Yeah, Sadiq's a little different. Hopefully he comes back around where it makes sense. Um, you think Simon let Maggie alive because he found out that she was pregnant? Um, I don't know. That's that's the big question that I had is why did Simon let <laughs> Maggie go when you're supposed to have the king, the widow, and Rick? And you had Maggie right there. Could have brought him back to Negan. But Simon didn't do that so is simon breaking the order from negan and that's what negan has a problem with uh simon has a problem with negan and negan you know finds out that he just let maggie go is that a problem too and also simon you know eventually goes to the scavengers and takes out does is negan ordering to do that or does simon go do that on his own What's the whole big thing here? Because I think Simon and Negan are going to have some problems in the second half of season eight, and it could be could be fatal for for somebody there. So, do you think Rick will go on a killing streak because of Carl's death? Um, I think he's going to be sad. I think he's going to Michonne might be the one that's going on a killing streak with Walkers, but I think that the whole thing Carl Carl's death's going to affect Rick, and Rick's going to be you know trying to get his act together. But I'm not sure he's going to have any chance to go on a killing streak, maybe against on some walkers. But I'm not sure um, what what could happen for that. So um, killing streak could happen or not, just because I'm not sure we're going to have the times with it. So let's see. What do you think of a Tyrese-like death for Rick later? I mean, I think Rick has to go out in a big way. And I just hope that it just makes sense. And hopefully it's... In season 25 of the of the Walking Dead. Now, if you watch my video with the Robert Kirkman panel, he was like, "Season 25, nothing but ghosts." Judas Ghost takes over. It was kind of funny how he uh, went over to season 25. But that would be crazy if the Walking Dead lasted that long. So here's the question right there: Do you think Sherry or Heath will ever come back? <laughs> um, I hope so. I hope they come back on there too. And I just I I can't wait to get information because I'm interested to know my thoughts or my my response to that for you guys because i i want that to happen hopefully Corey hawkins can get some time to actually fill some more heath stuff in in season nine for it so i'm hoping that that happens um let's see what you got but uh like i said i'm gonna go for another uh 10 minutes or so you guys have been asking some great questions and i love the uh the input here for that but two weeks guys the walking dead will come back And then uh, we'll have videos all the way before that. I got to put up the John Bernthal panel and the belly flop contest. And then um, we'll be around that time and for it. So I'll have my live stream on there for next uh, Sunday. And also I'm doing a Facebook interview on the uh, Negan Saviors group by uh, Jim. He's a a, a moderator of another group and a uh, person on another group for the uh, on facebook so i will have that as well i would do my live stream at one and then i have that at seven o'clock so check that out on facebook Um, i'm excited for a lot of those things there i'm gonna go for another 10 minutes guys so get your questions ready on there for it so let's see i gotta get caught up on here the the live chat is kind of messing me up a little bit here too so uh who in the saviors is going to die in the war Jared can't come soon enough, but that other smaller saviors, 
Um, it's rumored that, that Simon might. Uh, I don't think Negan does, but it's been kind of tough with some of the spoiler stuff because a lot of stuff happens at the hilltop, and that's on the studio. So we don't really know stuff that's been seen, who was seen, who was not. So um, there's going to be some deaths and some casualties. So it should be some good stuff. And we need some savers of significance to happen. And then maybe most likely Gavin as well too. So do you think Carl got bit where he got shot? Maybe he's just getting sick from it, but he may not turn. I know everybody wants um, Carl to live, but it's just not going to happen, guys. So... Regardless of the articles that you see and the videos that other things are happening, it's not going to happen. Carl is not going to live. He's not immune. He's not this. He's not that. He's just going to die in episode 809, and it should be very sad for it. So we'll see actually how it plays out. You think Negan will injure that certain character in the season finale? Um, he could definitely. I mean, I think Negan takes out Simon, but I think we'll see how it happens for that, I think there's going to be some infighting and stuff's going to implode with the saviors. Is is probably one of the big way that the saviors are defeated is because internally it explodes because there's so many saviors. They have the number, they have the artillery, they have the weapons, they have certain things. So we'll see. I'm excited to see the helicopter stuff because I get questioned a lot about that every uh, every so often. Who's in the helicopter? What's in the helicopter? So hopefully it's just somebody from. Uh, Texas coming around to pick people up and they take them back to Texas, you know, so we'll see. So do you think Rick will Negan uh, probably kill Negan, Tyler? You meant um, I would assume that's not going to happen because Negan needs to be the catalyst for a lot of other stories, line, storylines. And I'm sure the contracts of Jeffrey Dean Morgan were probably longer than two seasons for it. So I would assume that Negan lives. Do you think Clementine from the game will enter the show? Um, she is from Richmond. No, they said that, well, Kirkman said a lot of things, but he won't have Clementine and stuff like that on the show or the comic. The show is the show, the comic is the comic, and the games are the games. Even though there are some connections now with the latest issue of the Telltale Games with Michonne and her daughter. So never say never, but it's unlikely for that. Just like they, they said that Fear the Walking Dead will never connect with the Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, that's a bunch of crap. So they said a lot of things. And it's all coming down to how to make the most money. How does the story connect? How does everything do there? Because they want The Walking Dead year-round. They want The Walking Dead. They want Fear the Walking Dead over the summer. They want The Walking Dead again. They want the Telltale Games. They want they want you to play the games, buy the t-shirts, watch the shows, watch all that. That's what it comes down to for it. So I think it's going to be a lot of good content coming forward. Hopefully Angela Kang does a good job. Gimple oversees everything, so we'll still be around there too. So, uh, man, I just got a bunch of questions here. So we'll answer these, and then I have to call it a day, a Sunday. Uh, do you think there's something fishy going on with Simon? He seems to harbor resentment towards Negan. Why did Simon let Maggie go? That's what I'm saying, Deb. That makes the most sense is that Simon and Negan, there's going to be some infighting and some problems there. We started to see that when Negan was trapped in the room with Father Gabriel. And Simon and them tried to have these things. And then Simon and Negan, are we backsliding Simon? Are we doing that? So ultimately, I would think that Negan takes out other savers. He took out Davey. He took out, so, you know, he could take out Simon. And I think that would be probably be the storyline for it. So would Shane have been a better leader than Rick? Well, if you watch the panel that I'm going to post with John Bernthal this week, Shane, I put it up already, Shane's response, or John Bernthal's response about Shane. And then he just figured out a lot of things before this other group did. And he figured out some things too. So I think ultimately Rick became part Shane in some areas, especially in Alexandria, with some aspects of that. But Shane was a different leader than Rick. I'm not sure. They both had strengths and weaknesses. I think it would have been pretty good for uh, the connection of them both to be around because they both bring, both things brought a lot to the table both people brought a lot to the table but early on i think rick was naive of the world and shane was a little too harsh for it so um we're not sure why simon let maggie go exactly hopefully it'll find out in the second half and i think we will i think it'll be a lot of be i think there'll be a lot of good stuff in the second half that the second half that answers a lot from the first half so do you know about Maria Bello? That's been a big rumor since probably season six that she was going to be cast as Alpha. 
but I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. I think she would be a good actress for Alpha or Maga, like like Eddie says. I think I would like Alpha to be a separate character, so Maria Bello could pull it off to play Alpha. I think it would be pretty cool. I think it would be a good part for her to play. Well, Dante be in the show, Jane, I think has a possibility for that. I think Dante will be a big part for Maggie, as we know, for uh, in the comic um, connection for it. So will Gabriel put Carl down? I doubt that Gabriel will be anywhere but the hilltop. So, And he's all bloody-eyed in there, too. So I'm excited to see what happens with that. But I think he lives. I think he's uh, um, taking it pretty good. So let's see what we got for you guys here. Um, we got a lot of good stuff coming up for the second half of Season 8. Um, I'm excited for uh, The Walking Dead to return. Two weeks, guys. So I'm trying to get all these questions answered. You guys are asking a lot of good stuff, and the hour has flown by. We got five minutes, and I'm going to do a lot of stuff for the future of this channel. We're doing live chats, live streams, vlogs on there too. So the biggest thing for me, if you can, if you can guys, is hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you have, I truly appreciate it. If you can tell your friends and your family, if everybody that's already a subscriber gets two people to join, I'll be hitting that 100K goal so quick. And once I hit that 100,000, 100,000, 100,000 subscriber goal, then I'll be doing giveaways. And I'm already going to have giveaways in mind. I'm going to have a book giveaway. I'm going to do an Amazon gift card giveaway and probably a Funko Pop giveaway when we get closer to all that stuff. And once we hit those things and those markers, we're going to be doing more stuff giving back to you guys too. So if you can, pick up some books, Walking Dead Mystery Boxes, and that money will be coming to my comic that hopefully we can get out later this year. So comic issue one of fight for us it'll be out later this year um just got to get the money together it's just a matter of time for that and then i got to get the script together for it so i'll be having that as well um so yeah beth i don't know about that channel and uh i wouldn't uh recommend mentioning that channel here but um yeah guys i'm excited for the second half of season eight um you know there's certain channels online that are reputable that post good quality information and so just look at track records of other channels. So make your decision for that. So there you go, guys. I'm going to call it a day, a live chat, a live stream on that. So hopefully you guys are uh, enjoying what we have going forward for this channel. Live streaming next Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll be doing a live stream of the, the day of The Walking Dead returning in two weeks, guys. I'm excited for it. Hopefully you guys are too as well. And thank you for joining me, everybody. But Paul, Eagle, Eddie, Jamad, Beth, Jane, uh, everybody, Jerry Lynn, Tudor, everybody that comes every Sunday or once every Sunday too. I'm going to be on Facebook next Sunday at 7 on there to uh, do a live interview. So it'll be going live to answer a lot of questions for that too. So thank you guys for uh, joining me. You guys are awesome. Enjoy the marathon if you're going to watch it. It's always tough when you see the older episodes and you see Carl and Glenn and, you know, T-Dog even and stuff on there too. So uh, yes, I will, Julie. I would say hi to Callie's in the window over there. And Milo is somewhere walking around. I don't know. He's been a little crazy today. Um, 7 p.m., uh, Christine on Facebook. So I'm, I'm guessing it's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Once I find out, I'll post on the Walking Dead community and I'll let you know in the upcoming videos before it to let you guys. And I'll also have my live stream next uh, Sunday as well before that. So I will have more information for it for that. Fight for Us book series, soon to be comic book series, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching me. I'll just give you my thank you everyone type here. Appreciate it. I really do mean that. And again, if you can, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, tell everybody that about the channel that likes The Walking Dead about a good channel. And we'll be hitting that goal of 100,000 subscribers right away. And I will be doing the giveaways and the quizzes and all the other good fun stuff that we can. So I appreciate you guys taking the time. I appreciate you being a part of the channel. And thank you for watching, guys.